You are You are Alright guys, now that we've messed with the LEDs on the board a little bit, let's do something a little more complex. And first I'm just going to show you what the end result of what we're going for is. So as you can see I have yet another terminal open here on the left and I have the main program that's going to be running on the Max32 on the right. And you'll notice that it's a little smaller than before. Um, we've abstracted some things down. We have a UART available, a get message, a blink board light, a print line, and we remember our delay, but we don't have those function declarations in this file. We have a bunch more files, so I got a lot of stuff to show you guys, but first let me just demonstrate what we're going for. So as you can see, I just plugged the board in. Now, if you look here on the bottom, serial port COM3 115,200 8 none 1. These settings are the baud rate, the data bits, no parity, and one stop bit. That is what we're going to need. We're going to have no flow control. And as you'll see, that's what we'll set our settings register to. So let me just show you what happens when we connect to it. Right away, we're getting this heartbeat message every second. And we can see in our program, we have print line heartbeat and a delay one second. So that makes sense. But what about if you are available? What if that gets triggered? Well, let's send a message. Hello? And uh, what we did was we took the message and stored it in the incoming character array, and then we printed it back to it. So this is just a simple echo. Um, the biggest thing we can store is 100 characters. And you don't want to go crazy with that just because this doesn't have a lot of memory, but you can be a little, you can be pretty creative with this. So let's get into it. All right, let's first set up some additional files we're going to need. Let's put timer one in its own C file and in its own header file. Okay, let's look at main and see what can go where. I think anything that's a definition can go in a header file. Keep it like this for now. What that's going to mean is now main is going to have to include timer 1.h. Okay. Um, we're going to definitely want this function in timer 1.c. Now, these um, TMR1 is not a macro you can use without food xc.h. Okay. Okay, let's go back here. Looks like the last thing we need to do is somehow have a way to use to have these lines in a function. So let's go there and we'll call that um, void initial. Timer one and uh, let's call it that for now. Okay. Now timer one dot h. You do need to have these functions declared in the header file because all the C source files will be compiled um, in the linking phase. You need to have because you only ever really include header files in the linking phase. It will see that this is what you wanted and because of that we will be able to use this function in main because we include timer 1.h and this will always be compiled all right now let's make some macros and get these onboard led functionality into another file so i'm going to just call it initialize dot c not the best name i don't can't think of a better one right now make an initialize dot h Okay, so from main, we're definitely going to want something like this defined. So let's do um, um, LED board, LED one, deer is this, and board D two deer is that okay so I don't know how it thinks it knows what those are um, I think we'll need we'll need that to verify it 
So, right away we can go back in and do ward one ID. Deer. Two deer. So in main.h, we're going to need to include that. Okay. Now, these two. Also, we're going to define output. Everything lined up nice. Okay. Now, do define board D1. Let's do that here. Define board D2. Okay. Got all those things defined. Let's go back to main. Let's do output. Output board LED one, board LED two, and okay. Now our code is extremely descriptive. Board LED one and two set to output, and then toggling them on and off. So let's just make a function void toggle these and we'll um, int times in time. So I zero is less than times. Okay, so this point of this function is to be able to call this have this happen with uh, however many times we want to blink and how fast we want them to blink. So we're just going to make a simple function like that. We're going to get rid of this and we're going to call that function. We're going to call it, you know, five times 500 as the delay. So actually, now that we wrote that function, let's move it to the C file we set up for that. See toggle LEDs. So if we put the function declaration in initialize.h, everyone else will know about it. So this is gonna need all these definitions are in include initialize include timer one. So we build, we save, looks like we're good. All right, let's get going on UART. So we're gonna need another so C source file. This be UART, a corresponding header file. USB UART, erase everything. Get to our main.h, make sure we include it. Okay, now, before we start looking at documentation, let's just set up functions we're gonna want. So, uart, uart.h, include our header file, nrc file. Let's write an init uart function. Let's write an int uart available function. message where we pass something to put a message in character pointer character array max length okay cool let's also write void print that takes an argument of const char star string let's write print line which we'll see how these are related soon 
Let's also write, just for debugging, check serial errors. Now, the reason I just set up all these functions now is because I actually beforehand went through and wrote the functions and verified that they worked. This is not typically what I would do. I would go incrementally while looking at the data sheet, but for the essence of time, we're gonna show how to get this fully operational as quickly as possible. What we need to do next is get these functions into our header file declarations. Let's do that now. Don't have anything in here yet. Let's set up a define. We're gonna define something known as baud rate. Let's we'll set it to one for now. Okay, now that we have all of those in there, let's go ahead and start working on init UART. So, what we're going to need is to open up the datasheet. What I have open is what you can find if you go to Microchip's website. You go to the specific chip we have. You go scroll through documentation past the large datasheet and down to individual chapters. This is a 42-page document specifically on the UART module. So, we're going to look at the control register now and we are gonna pick out settings. So unlike before where we set all the bits at once, we're actually not gonna do that. And instead of going over the bits, we are just gonna show which ones we actually need to get this to work. So I'll, one way to use this is to use high baud rate enable, and we are gonna do that. It allows us to not have to count so high every time we need to send a bit across UART. So we'll do u1 mode bits dot brgh. We're going to set that high. Um, u1 brg is the baud rate generator value that it counts up to. We're going to set that to b rate and we'll calculate that later. And that's in our header file. So now there are status registers for uart. And just like the digital IO pins attached to the LEDs. There are physical pins that are attached to the TX and RX for UART and they need to be set to output and input. So the way you do that, U1 STA status bits dot um, URX enable, enable it. U1 STA bits dot UTX enable. Okay. The last thing we need to do is turn the module on. Now I've had a lot of problems debugging where I set all the settings at once and then I turned on URX and UTX and it just didn't work and I wasn't sure why. I think it's because our peripheral clock frequency is just as high as our system clock. So you'll see little warnings in the data sheet that says when, the one to, when there's a one to one ratio from peripheral bus clock to system clock you know, don't do this instruction after this instruction. Whether or not we are ready to receive a message happens to be a single bit. This tells us if there is something in the buffer. Data available. Okay, let's work on get message now. We're going to be taking in chars one by one from the receive buffer registers. So we're gonna say, we got a char. We're gonna do two variables complete to keep track of the state of what we're doing. And num bytes, keep track of how many bytes or chars we've read in. So while we're not complete. And yes, I am just following along with my own code. This is not how programming happens. So what we need to know is if u1 sta bits.urxda. We're expecting this to be true all, all the time if we're in this function. So we're gonna do data equals u1 rx reg. That is the buffer register we pull from. So when we actually execute this line of code, not only do we store what was in that register in our own variable, but the next byte will get clocked into that register for us automatically. And that is actually the purpose of this line here. This tells us if that's ready or not. Now, the way we know when we're actually gonna be done, 
receiving a message is if data is equal to the new line character. The new line character will be the last thing. No. The thing about Windows and the at least the terminal program that I'll be using on Windows is that um, it also uses the care it uses a carriage return so there's a backslash r character as well so we don't want to add that it comes before the new line character and we don't want to add it to the message array that we're going to be populating in here do message num bytes increment afterwards equals data so we're filling up this array So if num bytes is greater than or equal to max length, um, we're just gonna start over at the beginning and just start overwriting, just so that we don't have any problems. Okay. Now, the last thing we're gonna do when we get out of the while, we're gonna take what we have at that current index, num bytes, we're gonna set it to the terminating string character, the null no character hey guys now that we've learned a lot together instead of making the rest of this a code along just like the way this has been going so far I'm gonna post screenshots of each of these finished functions and everything you'll need in each file to run this project so that you can complete it yourself and get it up and running and that way sort through the code and see if you can make sense of it Really quick, I did actually forget one extremely important thing and it's the baud rate. So we're gonna go for a 115,200 baud rate. Now, if we look at this equation, the baud rate is equal to the frequency of the peripheral bus divided by four times what we set our register to plus one. If we get our calculator out and do some math, we know 115,000, okay. Let's do 115,200 times 4. Okay, we're, looks like we're going to have this bottom over here. We're going to take 64 million and divide by this amount. But with this particular calculator, we can't store the answer. Or maybe I don't know how, but we just use parentheses 115,200 times 4. Okay. 138.8 repeating is over here now and over here on the left will be UXBRG plus one So we're going to subtract one from both sides 137.8 repeating and that is where we get 138 from it's close enough where we won't Be expecting any glitches although I don't know to what extent there could be errors That should be all the code. Let me know if there's anything wrong with it. If you're getting red squiggles anywhere, um, the first thing I would do is check your includes. If you get any compiler errors, see if you can figure it out. I might have something slightly different in one of those other files that might be messing something up that I'm not aware of. But lastly, I would just like to thank anyone who made it all the way through this series or at least watched this particular video in full. This is an extremely long video. What we're trying to do here is pretty complicated. The code's not easy to understand, but it's a pretty cool functionality, so thanks for watching.